to welcome everybody today to Leeds Northwest constituency. We've got a very special guest here today. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome the leader of the Labour Party. Can you all hear me? <laughs> Hello, how's that better? better? Technology triumphs, thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for those on the roof over there. Thank you for those up the tree over there. Just be careful now, make sure you don't fall. And thank you all you standing on the wall down there. Again, be careful, don't fall. What a fantastic crowd. We've just come from Hebden Bridge, where we had to have an overflow meeting outside, and some people were standing in the river to take part in the rally. What a fantastic event that was, and yours is also. I want to say thank you to Alex for speaking to you earlier and for the work he's doing and done. Alex, Alex wants you to be our next MP! Alex! Alex! You've got to vote for this man. This man to represent your community. This man who's serious about dealing with the housing crisis that we face across this country. And is very serious about sustainability and environmental issues. And he will bring that skill, that skill to power skill to help us build the inclusive society that we want. And to win this election, we've got to get out there and do a great deal of campaigning work. And before I say a few things about policies, only put your hand up now if you are registered to vote. Who's registered? The problem, the, problem with doing it, the problem with doing it that way round is I can't see the hand can go up. But very seriously, voter registration closes on the 22nd. There were, at the start of this election, a very large number of people, several million, mainly young people. I didn't understand any of that. I didn't really understand any of that, but hi, how are you doing? Nice to see you. I'm sure things are all well. So, if you're not registered, get registered. If you know somebody isn't registered, get them registered. Listen, our ancestors laid down their lives that we might have the right to vote, that we might build a democracy, that women might get the right to vote. They won those things. And it's up to us to use the power of the ballot box to change our society. That is what this election is about. This morning I was in Liverpool. I was speaking to the RCN conference, a conference of health workers. And what I said to them first was, Quite simply, these two words, thank you for what you do for all of us every year in our National Health Service. Thank you for coping, thank you for coping with the crisis of the cyber attack on our NHS, where criminals are basically holding us all to ransom in order to get money for themselves and damaging the health care of all of us. Thank you. Yes, that's, that's the right response. Thank you. And then the other issues. NHS workers have had seven years of frozen pay or pay cuts. Effectively, a 14% pay cut over seven years. We will end the pay cap and allow them to be properly paid. And instead of, and instead of blaming doctors, blaming the health service, blaming the patients for being ill, as this government is wont to do, we will do something very different. We will ensure that our hospitals are properly funded, that the sustainability and transformation plans will be halted so we can look at the needs of health care all across the country. Our hospitals 
our hospitals, our hospitals are under strain for many reasons. They're under strain because of the shortage of social care places. They're under strain because of the shortage of mental health nurses and the support for those going through a crisis. They're under strain for all the inequalities in our society of stress, of bad housing, of insecure employment. And we need a Labour government that will bring in efficient microphones. And I promise, I promise we will achieve it. This is a balancing act between me, between me and the batteries. It's a balancing act between me and the batteries and so far we're holding out, okay. So nobody touch the microphone otherwise it won't work. And so on our NHS, yes it is about funding, but it's also about understanding that principle of what the NHS is. Those with vision, those with vision in the harshness of the 19th century and the depression later in the 20th century, they had a vision that health care would be free at the point of use as a human right. We will maintain that. We will maintain that principle. Maintain that principle. And look at the issues that people face. I mentioned social care. There's a million waiting for social care. And when the social care is not available, do you know what happens? Either those people suffer on their own, or they rely on neighbours or friends or relatives, nearly always women, have to give up their jobs and their career in order just to look after somebody. I want to see a social care system that works for everybody, not just in Surrey, which is the Tories' favourite county. Just for the record, just for the record, I think people in Surrey deserve social care just as much as people in Leeds deserve social care. There is also a mental health crisis facing this country. A quarter of us in our lifetime will go through some very difficult and very dark places. Too many young people frightened of the stigma, lack of support, suffer in silence, suffer alone and sadly some of them have even taken their own lives as a result of it. So the stress that people go through, the I. Daniel Blake generation that they go through, the problems people go through, yes we need to properly fund our mental health services, yes there will be a minister dedicated towards mental health but we also need as a people, as a community and as a society to stand up against the stigma and have real parity of esteem between physical and mental health. And I am, and I don't have a problem with any of that. I don't have a problem with talking about that because that is the kind of society we want to live in and want to achieve. And so I said thank you to the RCN and thank you to all health workers. And I want to ask all of you to join together to support the principle, the principle that's so important of our National Health Service and recognise that in our manifesto that will come out tomorrow, I can't give you a sneak preview of it, none of you have heard anything about it up to date. You've heard, some, you've heard a few leaks I'm sure but ignore all that, you'll get the real McCoy tomorrow morning. And you know what? You're going to like it. Now, there's some. Uh, I tend not to get involved in um, repartee with others in politics, so I find it's really actually often very counterproductive. But I did hear something this morning that the party to which the Prime Minister belongs, who has such great difficulty in remembering its name, it's called the Conservative Party. Um, um, very good, very good, yes. Very good, that's the right response, thank you very much. Um, apparently are now the workers' friends. Uh, they're the friends of the working class of this country. Um, well, anyone who is a friend would not allow six million people to be earning less than the living wage in Britain. Anyone who's a real friend would not 
leave one million people, one million people on zero hours contracts not knowing what work they're going to get, what their money's going to be this week, how they're going to pay the rent, how they're going to feed their children, not knowing. Is it right that in 21st century Britain, a million people get up each morning, stare at the mobile phone, hoping there's a text message saying, we need you in for work today, and staring at it knowing the chances are they might not get it. That degree of insecurity is wrong, harsh, and unnecessary. And so, that is a condition created by the so-called friends. And then those that have an injustice done to them and seek retribution and seek justice by going to the employment tribunal are now told they've got to pay the fees and they may even have to pay the costs if the decision goes against them. We will abolish tribunal fees straight away. And in the 20 points that we set out on workers' rights, which the brilliant Becky Long Bailey set out on May the 1st, we will guarantee a living wage of £10 an hour for all. We will, we will guarantee trade union rights of all at work and representation of all at work from day one and guarantee, guarantee those rights. And we're looking beyond that about training, about education, and uh, about the quality of work that we do. And there are huge issues facing us in this election. It's a question of how you value things or if you don't. I believe that every child, wherever they're born, whoever their parents are, deserves the best in education. But I also believe, I also believe that education should not be decided by effectively a postcode lottery. You could almost draw a map of this country and decide where the children born in Area A are going to end up in university, professions or what else, and those born in Area B that wouldn't. You could also draw a map of the poverty of this country and overlay it with a map of where the biggest cuts have taken place in local council expenditure. And one would obliterate the other. It's the systemic underfunding of the needs of the poorest in the poorest areas that is the feature of both the coalition government and of this Tory government. And so we want to change that. We want to end the nonsense of head teachers being told, ask the parents to pay some money to the school that you might be able to keep the teachers in work and continue paying their salaries. It is not the job of head teachers to be making those kind of decisions. Head teachers are there to run the school, inspire the teachers and educate the children. They should not be asked to go to the school gates and collect money for the school to survive. And so we will ensure proper funding of our schools. But in order to achieve in our schools, our children need to eat and be well fed. And that's why I'm very proud of the promise made by Angela Rayner that we will guarantee a free school lunch for every primary school child in every school in England. Because that takes away the stigma between those that have free school meals and those that don't. It's very important that children are properly fed in order to learn properly. So these are the issues that we face, but then you move on to secondary schools and the stress and strain that goes on there. And then you move into the era of universities and of colleges where many are deterred because of the fees and because of the debt they're going to go into. We will do everything we can to support the entire student community and student population. Because I believe university education should be available for all those that want it and are going to benefit from it. I do not believe universities should be a source of debt for the rest of your life. And
it's about it's about the values that we bring it's about the values that we bring to people and life in society there is a housing crisis in britain at the present time that housing crisis the most extreme symptom of it are the thousands of people sleeping on the streets of our cities every night Every one of those people has a life, has a story, has various tragedies and things that have happened to them. But somewhere along the line, our society has become so hardened that we tolerate the idea that there are homeless on the streets of Britain in the 21st century. I don't, and I won't. And so, it is about giving councils the facilities to borrow, the opportunities to build and create good quality life tenancy council housing for people who are currently living in often very difficult circumstances in very expensive private rented accommodation, often also insecure. It's also about ensuring we as a nation are properly housed. The priority of the Conservatives seems to be starter homes in the South East at £400,000, off-plan purchases of luxury properties in the centre of all our big cities that are then kept empty as a way of um, coining in some money as the values rise in the future. Sorry, a real housing policy is directed towards providing housing for everybody rather than a market opportunity for the few. So, these are some of the areas that we're going to be addressing in our manifesto tomorrow. These are some of the areas that we'll be speaking about. But an election isn't just a transaction between taxation and services. 95% of the population of this country will get no tax rises, national insurance or VAT rises under Labour. We will be making sure those with the very broadest shoulders and those corporations with the very greatest profits, they are the ones that will be asked to pay a little more that the rest might live a little better. It's also about our attitudes, our attitudes towards our environment, our attitudes towards each other, our attitudes towards the rest of the world. I'm very proud to lead the Labour Party. I'm very proud that the Labour Party was founded by people with that vision of a society that included all, that gave the same quality of opportunity for all. And I'm very proud of the achievements of the National Health Service, of the Welfare State, of the Human Rights Act, of the Equalities Act, of the fundamental decencies that we have in society. But this, uh, this election campaign, and this is, I think I'm right in saying, the 40th or 41st event I've done since the election was announced. And this election campaign is like two stories. One is of many of our national media, deeply cynical, deeply... Well, it's all right, no, 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 we need an independent media, and that's a good thing, but I just hope they would report what we're saying. That would be a help. But it's, at one, one level, a series of quite cynical calculations that are made, X, Y, Z, one, two, three, this, that, and the other. Then on the other side of it, is an amazing sense of unity. Look around you in this crowd here today. We're young, we're young, we're old, we've got issues, we've got problems, we are strong together. We represent all communities, we represent all faiths, we represent that common human decency of the kind of world we all want to live in. And so, think on those that went before us, who worked so hard that we might achieve the things I've talked about, education, health and housing. But think also of how strong we can be together. How strong we can be in eliminating poverty and injustice and inequality within our society. How strong we can be with a message to the rest of the world that we want to work to ensure that our climate change does not destroy us all.
that we want to work together for environmental sustainability and we want to work together for a world based on human rights, human rights and justice all around the world. And so a Labour government after June the 8th will ensure there are negotiations with the EU to make sure we have trade access to the European Union and protection of the rights we've, we've achieved and protection of the rights of EU nationals to remain living in this country with family reunion as well. It's about, it's about all of our communities, it's about all of our communities coming together. And this election gives us that chance and that opportunity. But it does mean, it does mean all of us have got to get out there on the doorstep with the leaflets, with the posters, and give that message to everybody else. You don't have to be frightened by what the Tories are saying. There is nothing inevitable about this election. Let's go out there and show we, we, can do this thing together. And our election message, our election message, can I borrow this for one moment? It's quite simply this. For the many, not the few. For the many, not the few. say with that, I'm sorry we couldn't all get into the hall, it wasn't big enough. I'm sorry we couldn't all get in the car park, it wasn't big enough. I thank the cooperation we've received from local residents here, from the police and many others to ensure that we can have this fantastic, this fantastic rally here today on the streets. So Alex, Alex please. So, we elect Alex as our MP. We win the election for everybody. For those in need, for the children, for the generations to come. And we win this election to show communities united do win. Communities united do achieve things. Go for it. Thank you very much. Oh, my God.